Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ABS Video Editor 8.0 tutorial. This is part 3 of the series and in this video we will be covering the details of how to properly use text in your videos. If you haven't seen part 1 of the series, I would recommend you take a look at it so that you can get a feel of what we will be covering in today's video. So let's begin talking about what the text effect actually is, because it's a lot more than what people actually think it is. So the text effect is used to add unique captions and shapes and images to your video. You can find text in the text tab which is located right here, so if we go ahead and click on it, you can see all the different presets that is loaded into AVS. To start out, you would have to select one of these presets. You can click and drag it onto the timeline. Now, with the timeline here, the text line is a little bit down, so you have to scroll down a little bit, and your text line will be located right here. To begin, you can go ahead and click a sample right here. So we'll go ahead and select this one. We'll click, hold, and drag it onto the text line right here. And you don't need any media in your main video line to start. You can just put your text line right there. But we're going to add some media to our main line video just to add some contrast to our text. So we're going to go ahead and lock this line right here. Let's go into our media library. We're already in our sample folder. So let's go ahead and select this video and we'll click and drag it onto our main video line. Let's go ahead and unlock this real quick. And now we're going to shorten up the text duration. Now you can change the duration of the text by clicking this button right here, which is the duration button. You can click it and you can set the time limit. The default is one minute. So let's go ahead and set it to about 20 seconds using that feature. So now our text is 20 seconds long. To position your text, you can click, hold and drag it. And where the outer lines are is where your text will end up. So you can change it like that. You can also change the duration by hovering your mouse over the edge of it and clicking and dragging it left or right to change the duration like so. You can also right click and press duration as well. And that will also bring up the same effect. So let's go ahead and change it to 10 seconds flat like so. Once you have your text position on your text line and your duration set, you get to start editing your text, which is the fun part. So to start editing your text, you select the text that you want to edit. The button pops up here, which says edit text, or you can right click and press edit text as well. We're going to go ahead and select the text object and press the edit text button right here. And a new window will open up to where you can start editing. And this is where you'll be doing a lot of work with your text. This is where all the magic will happen. And we're going to go over these top buttons up here and what they do. So the first button up here is the add text button. What this button does is it will add another text. So we go ahead and click it. Another text box opens up. So we have two text boxes now. And of course you can click and drag them to position them wherever you want in the video. Pressing the add text button will add a new text. We can click it again. We will get a third text pop up to where we can edit it how we please. The next button next to that is the add image button. And this is why I say text is a little bit more different than what people actually think. So if you press the add image button, you can actually add pictures onto your text file, which is pretty cool. So we have all these pictures right here. Let's go ahead and add this box right here, which is just a transparent PNG image. So we went ahead and add that image right there. And this button right here, you can add an image as well. You can press the add image button right there. You can also add all sorts of shapes. You can add lines, you can add rectangles, you can add ellipses. So let's go ahead and add a rectangle right here. The rectangle is kind of big. So we can position it. We can change all sorts of properties, which we will get to a little bit later. You can also make it just a border rectangle. So you can highlight certain things by pressing the pen button. But you can go to the brush button to make it a little bit bigger like so. And of course, you have all sorts of other shape options as well. You can have lines. Let's go ahead and change the color of this line so we can see it a little better. We have all sorts of other shapes as well that you can probably mess with and go around with. But the next option that we have next to the add image button is the delete button. So let's say we don't want this line. We can go ahead and select the line, then press the removed object button. That will remove the object. And so let's say we have too many text objects going on here. I don't like this text object right here. Just go ahead and press the remove object button as well. To remove the object, you can also, over here in the objects menu, you can select the different objects that are in your text. You can also right click them and remove the object like so. So the next few buttons that we have are the cut, copy, and paste buttons, and those are exactly what they say. So you can go ahead and press this copy button right here. It will copy the thing that you have selected. You can press paste and it will paste it onto your text board. You can also cut it back out and repaste it as well. So those are the, what those buttons do. And so the next two options that we have here are the bring to front and move to back buttons. And so let's just have an example right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select our rectangle and our rectangle is kind of in the way here. Now you notice that these two text boxes are in front of it and this text box in the back here is behind it. So I don't really want that. I want the rectangle to be behind all of the text. So we can go ahead and press the move to background button and that will move it backwards one object at a time. Now let's say we want our rectangle in the front. We can press the bring to foreground button and one at a time it will put it in front of each object. And of course the next two buttons that we have here are the undo and redo buttons. So let's say you're working and you accidentally, uh oh, you removed an object. Let's go ahead and undo that and we can bring our object back to where it was. The next button on the top toolbar is the grid lines button. So if you press it, it'll just bring up grid lines. And I use it a lot to position my text in the center. So we can see the center line of the text is a little bit off the center line of the grids. So we can go ahead and center it. These grid lines are just used for perspective focus and to center things and to make sure everything is symmetrical if you'd like. 
Now this last button here I don't really want to mess with and don't really want to talk too much about, but it's a TV safe zone. I don't really want to confuse you guys, but basically it will show you the borders of different displays to see if you the text that you're working with uh, will interfere with any of those borders. So those are all the buttons on the top bar here. Now we're going to go over to the actual editing portion of this video. So if you want to edit your text right here, you can go ahead and double click your text and you can select it and write whatever you'd like in it. So let's go ahead and write sample text. Now obviously this font is a little bit big. We don't want our font to be that big. So we have over here the properties menu for the text draw. It's called properties text draw and this will change how your text will look in your video. This is where you're going to be spending most of your editing time with your text. So we want to change our size from 112 font to let's say about 24 font and that'll make our sample text a lot smaller. So we can position it right in the center there and we can also make it bold. We can make an italicized underline. We can change the alignment of it by making it centered, by making it aligned to the left or the right. I like it right in the center there. We can change the font of it. Let's make it Times New Roman right there. Let's make it not italicized. Let's make our font a little bit bigger to about 48. So that's how you can do your basic edits for your text. Now we want to change our colors up a little bit. So we go into the brush menu right here. Brush type is automatically set to a default texture in AVS. You can change it to a solid color. So we have our solid color to a blue. We can change it to a solid red color. So let's go over the alpha real quick. And the alpha right now is set to 100, which means that the main color right here, which is red, is going to be 100% shown. But if we go ahead and set it to, let's say, 50, not 500, 50. If it's set to 50, that means the red color will be 50% shown. So if we set it to zero, that means 0% 0 of the red will be shown. And the reason that it's black right now is because of the shadow, which is right here. And we'll get to the shadow real quick. Let's go ahead and set our alpha back to 100 so we can go over the different brush types. And our brush types options are a nice drop down menu here. You can have it as a solid color. You can have it as a gradient, which is two different colors that you can mix together. And you can change it to, let's say, a nice yellow color. And we can click in the middle of this box here, which is what I did by accident last time. You can get more color options as well. So we can set it to a, a purple bluish color right there. And if you want to switch your options, if you want the blue to be on the left, you can press the rotate button. And you can change your gradient. So if you want it to be in and out, if you want it to be top and bottom, left and right, you can mess with the gradient options through this button right here. You can also mess with the alpha in and the alpha out, which again changes your transparency with the different colors. So we can set the blue to 0%. We can set our yellow to 0, yellow to 100, blue to about 50-ish. Uh, you can just mess with your alpha ins and alpha outs how you like that. Our next option with the gradient is the hatch texture. Hatch is pretty cool. It, met, it uses the gradient colors as well, but it doesn't fade them together. It has different lines and dots and patterns that you can apply to it. So we can have this lined pattern right here. So now we have striped lines going through it. We can have these horizontal lines going across it. Checkered board patterns. There's some really cool options that you can do with this. So that is the hatch brush type. Our last type here is the texture type. And what you can do is you can set a texture from a picture as the color of your text. So if we press this texture button, we can search for a picture here. So we can use this picture right here, this colorful picture as well. We can press open, and now our sample text is that picture. So those are all four of your brush types. Your solid, your gradient, your hatch, and your texture. Now the next menu that we have is the shadow menu, where we can change the shadow and the background of your text. Right now our shadow background is set to black. Let's go ahead and change it to white so we can see it a little bit better. Right now our alpha is at 100%, so we can see 100% to the background. But right now it isn't really blurry, which is okay. So we can change the offset X. You can see that the sample text is changing a little bit to the left and right, which is the X axis. We can change it offset Y, we can change it vertically like so. And this blur option is what I use all the time. You can change it to make the background just a little bit blurry, which adds a little bit of touch to the main text, adds a little bit of contrast to it. So again, mess with these settings how you like the offset Y and the offset X and the alpha of it and the blur of it as well. And of course, if you don't want a shadow to appear, you can press the enable shadow button that will remove your shadow from it. If you want it back, you can just click it again and your shadow will appear. The last menu option that we have is the edge settings. So we can change our edge settings, which is the border of the text. So right now our border is white. We can change it to black. We can change it to a nice vibrant purple color like so. And the distance just increases the border width of it. So we can increase it. You can see the border of it getting a little bit bigger, which gets a little bit excessive as you increase it more and more. So you got to be a little bit careful with it, a little bit touchy with it. We'll increase it to about 22 right there. And our alpha is at a 100. Of course, we can decrease our alpha. And we can also remove our edge by clicking this button right here, which will remove our edge and re-enable it. So go ahead and mess with all these different menus with our fonts and your brush types. So that is the properties text draw menu with how you can edit your text, how you want it to look. Now our next menu is the properties text animation menu, which is right here. 
which is how we change the animation of how our text is to appear in our video. So right now this text is set to a default fade in and a default fade out. So if we press this button right here, we can see all the different transitions that we can use for our text. And there is a lot of really cool ones that I like to use in here. Let's go ahead and find a nice one. So let's go ahead and use this appear shade option, which I like using a lot. So if you guys saw in the last video, we showed how to use the fade ins and fade out option on our video effects. So if you guys saw that, it's, it's the exact same concept. But if not, we'll go ahead and explain it again. So this lighter shaded area right here indicates the fade in time for this. So that is the transition time. So if we go ahead and drag our cursor over the fade in part, you can see our text slowly start to fade in using the transition that we selected. We can also change our fade in and fade out by dragging that cursor to a specific time. So let's go ahead and set our fade in to about three seconds. And you can see that it's about three seconds by this timestamp over here. And if you want to change your fade in to be a little bit longer, you can press this fade in button and that will set the length like that. It will set the length to where your cursor is at the time. So if our cursor is way over here and we press our fade in button, that's the amount of time that your text will be fading in. So we'll go ahead and move this back to about two seconds right there. And of course, the same thing applies to your fade out. So your fade out can be wherever you want, wherever your cursor is. Then you just go ahead and press the fade out button in this last section. The lighter shaded area will indicate the time frame of which your text is fading out. So again, go ahead and take a look at these different transitions because there's some really nice ones in here, some really fun ones to mess with. But let's say you're not too good with messing with the text animations, you're not too good with combining transitions, and you don't really like how they look. So you can go into the presets menu, which is up here right next to the objects menu. If you click on that, you have this option called the draw presets. The draw presets, all they do is they change the color of it. Right now we're going to be focusing on the animations presets, which is right next to it. So you can preview the animation by hovering your mouse over it. That will show the fade in and fade out animation of the preset that it is. So let's say we can scroll down. Let's say we really like 013 right there. We like the fade in and the little swirl at the end. So you can click it. You can click, hold, and drag it onto your text. And now that text has that animation preset. So it has that cool fade in and it has the cool swirl at the end. You can also make your own animation presets. Let's say you really like that appear shade preset that you have. You can go ahead and press save in your animation preset. You can name it sample preset like so. And now your sample preset is right there shown. So you guys already saw the draw presets. I'll show you how to use them real quick. All they are, they're different color options for your video. So let's go ahead and say we really like the 035 color preset. We can click, hold, and drag it onto our text, and it changes the color format to be whatever preset it is set over here. So guys, those are the very basics of how to use text in your videos. But now I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a preview of how I use text and how I like to edit. So we're going to go ahead and right click delete that text and we'll have a new text so I can show you a sample of how I like to work. So we'll click and drag a new text preset onto here and we'll shorten it up. We'll change the duration to about 10 seconds. Let's say 10 seconds will work. So we can have our text right here, right at the beginning of the video. And let's go ahead and start editing our text. So I'm going to make it say AVS Video Editor 8.0 Tutorial like that. So let's go ahead and change this font to about 24. I like that. I like 24 right there. And we'll make this top bar AVS Video Editor. Now I don't really like the colors. It kind of blends in with the background. Let's make it pop a little bit. Let's go ahead and change our brush to like a brighter color. Uh, let's make it a gradient color actually. Um, kind of want a little bit lighter because the background is kind of darker. So purple and white, yeah, that kind of works pretty well. I like that. Uh, should we make it an in and out? No. We'll make it a top and bottom. No, we'll actually stick with the side, the left to right like that. So I'll turn on the grid line so I make sure that this text is centered like that. Let's go ahead and change our font here. There we go. I kind of like that one, the MV Bali, whatever that is. So we'll make this a little bit more bold so we can make it thick. It's already kind of a tile size, so we don't need to do that anymore. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. 36 is kind of big. Let's make it 30. 30 seems kind of good. So now let's change our shadow up. I don't really like the shadow that we have on it. Let's make it 100% visible. Let's change the blur of it to be maybe white. White seems a little bit off. Let's make these presets, these offsets, zero. So it kind of adds like a ghost effect to it. I don't know if I like that. Uh, black kind of does give it a little pop. So I like the black a little bit better for the shadow. Now I can change our edge. Obviously, I don't like that edge color. Black would be a little bit better for this. Yeah, I kind of like that better. What if we change it to white? How would that look? White seems like it's a little bit too much for that. If we change it to purple, yeah, that's a little bit too much. Let's go ahead and stick with black for now. So now I'm going to start messing with the animation. So I want it to this text to be dropping down from the top here. So let's see if we can find a drop down from top. We have an up drop effect. That looks pretty cool. 
How would that look if I drag my cursor down? Yeah, I kind of like that. That looks pretty nice. So right now it's at one second fade in time, which works perfectly. I like that. So now I'm going to copy this text option by using this copy button. I'm going to press copy and I'll paste it again. So now we have two of the same, but I'm going to change the text of this by changing it to 8.0. I'm going to go ahead and center 8.0 right in the middle, right under that. And we'll make this font a little bit bigger now, maybe 64. 64 is a little bit too much. How about 48? 48 will work. Now we don't want the 8.0 to be dropping, which will overlay the AVS video. So let's go ahead and have it fly in from the left. I'd say left would work. Left drop would be cool, but I think there's something a little bit better in here, like a left move. A left move would be a little bit better. Yeah, that looks a little bit nicer. Let's go ahead and change the AVS video editor instead of a... A fading up drop, let's have it just a straight drop from the top, like a top move. Yeah, something like that. So that looks pretty good. Now I don't want the 8.0 to come in at the same time as AVS Video Editor, so we're going to set the 8.0 to come in a little bit after. So right now it's set to one second. It's where the AVS Video Editor will stop fading in. So I'm going to start the 8.0 right here by pressing this button, which is the mark in button. That's how we can start our time frame to where we want the 8.0 to start. And I'll make the fade in about one second as well. So the fade in will be right there. So this is what it looks like right now. It's going to do that and then that, which looks pretty cool. So now we can go ahead and start our last part, which will be the word tutorial. Tutorial. And I forget what font we used. It was font 30. So we'll change this to font 30 like that. And we'll go ahead and center this right there. So that looks pretty good. We'll have this one move from the bottom, so a bottom move right there. And we'll start the mark in right after 8.0 fades in. And this will be about 3.1 seconds for the fade in right there. So it looks like everything should be finished up. Let's go ahead and preview this. And I'll show you guys how it looks. So we got AVS Video coming from the top, 8.0 from the left, and Tutorial coming from the bottom. It is a little bit slow. Again, this was a really quick edit. Things do look pretty cool though, so that's just a quick tutorial of how I use text and how you can start messing with it, how you do a little bit of trial and error. Uh, I might as well just add an image. Let's go ahead and add the AVS logo actually. I forgot I had this picture. So this is the logo of AVS that I made in Paint, MS Paint, which was pretty cool. But I don't, I obviously don't want that green background in there. So if we want to apply a transparent color to it, we just go ahead and select this option right here. And we want to remove that green background, so we press the middle of the black there. We hold our eyedrop right over the color that we want to remove, and there we go. So now we have that picture right there. Go ahead and position it to be about right there. And I want that picture to start once everything is faded in. So bam, right there. And we'll have it a fade in of about 0.5 seconds, so 3.6 or so. And so here is what it actually looks like. We got AVS Video Editor from the top, 8.0 from the left, tutorial from the bottom, and then our picture fades in, which is pretty cool. So there you guys have it. That is the text option in AVS Video Editor. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you guys did, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe for more AVS Video Editor tutorials to come, and I will see you guys next time.